You've clicked on this video, and just by looking at this picture, you can already guess what Suge Knight is going to say. Don't want to don't have to worry about the executive producer trying to be all in the videos, all on the records, dancing, coming death row. This was during the Source Awards in 1995. Many dramatic events took place after these words were uttered. The murder of Suge Knight's close friend, the beef between East and West Coast, and the most tragic of them all, the death of Tupac and Biggie. Suge Knight himself said that after that night, everything went south. Even though at the beginning, as you all know, Suge and Puff were extremely good friends. You know, I was just networking with the brother, and um, yeah. he would come pick me up from the airport, show me a lot of love. You know, I really had thought we were, were, were cool, you know what I'm saying? Right. Cool acquaintances, you know what I'm saying? Just being respectful from right. people coming into other cities and stuff. At that time, Suge already had Death Row, while Puff had just founded Bad Boy Records. He was preparing Biggie's album, Ready to Die, and Puffy was interested in knowing Suge's opinion regarding that release. And he also asked about using some of the album's instrumentals. As an example, we'll play the intro from Biggie's album, and there you'll hear a sample from Snoop Dogg's song called The Shiznit. As for that very Source Awards ceremony, it all began thanks to the guys from Boston, David Mays and Jonathan Schechter in the year 1988. The Source magazine was the most widely read rag in hip-hop journalism by the early 90s. Each issue a conversation piece all on its own. With its newsstand dominance came the idea for a natural brand extension, an award show. In 1991, The Source began handing out trophies on a special episode of Yo! MTV Raps. Three years later came a full-fledged production, complete with a stage show at Madison Square Garden's Paramount Theater. The first annual Source Music Awards done major, big time, blowing up the spot right now. The show really just started. And so the Source Awards became a very prestigious event, and it was a great honor for any rapper to win the award. By 1995, Bad Boy Records had everything going great for them. The label's artists were the leaders of the music industry and Biggie's hits were played at every party. What you think all the guns is for? All-purpose war got the Rockwellers by the door. The main guy from our previous videos was Keefe D. And in that video, we mentioned that even Keefe noticed at the summer jam party that Suge envied Puff's rapid success in his managerial role. Death Row now had a worthy opponent who not only got to their level, but even surpassed them, which is why Suge felt that the West Coast wasn't getting the attention it deserved. As Ice Cube says, New York didn't respect its colleagues from the West. And an artist named Tim Dog did a song called Compton out of nowhere. We like New York, why y'all, you know, why, why he take a shot? Nobody really rebutted him. Like, you know, they kind of let it slide. And then more and more artists start taking shots. Fuck Compton is the song in which Tim Dog dissed the entire West Coast scene. But those who took the biggest hits were the members of the NWA group and even the singer Michelle A. You wanna play, go ride in the sleigh. I'm so large, I fuck Michelle A. And so, right after that, there came many responses. Mr. Buster, where the fuck you at? Can't scrap a lick, so I know you got your gadget. The most interesting part of all is that after the song was released, Tim Dog was nearly killed in San Francisco when he went there to throw a concert. Shock G whom you've previously heard together with Pac in the song I Get Around, said the following. If it weren't for Tupac, he would have been killed for that track. Although Tim says that it was because of some woman. So the shit go down, he felt like the guy was a yeah. He felt like the guy was being real up. So he was like, yo, don't do that to an East Coast. You know, he took me to his house, you know, got the guns and came back with me, had my back. And that, that meant some real shit to me, you know, that showed me he was a real G. And then, on the 3rd of August, 1995, the source returned to that very same Madison Square Garden's Paramount Theater. Except, the climate in hip-hop had changed dramatically. They started it off with an epic performance by Death Row. I can feel it. Yeah! yeah. Check it out. They said murder was the case that they gave me. Then Biggie, who won the New Artist of the Year Award, showed up on stage and wished peace upon everyone. Well, love to everybody up in this. The real. Right up, right? Next up, the group Outkast came out on stage. 
they won in the New Artist of the Year group category. The reaction they received was mixed. Andre understood that they were not welcomed here. He decided to take a jab at the audience by saying the following. But it's like this though. I'm tired of folks, you know what I'm saying? The closed-minded folks, you know what I'm saying? It's like we got a demo tape and don't nobody want to hear it, but it's like this, the South got something to say. That's all I got to say. Yeah. Biggie then won another award. This time, it was Lyricist of the Year. Yeah, y'all know what I'm trying to do. Straight up Brooklyn in the house, representing. Then, 40 minutes later, Death Row finally received their first win for Best Rap Music Video. The winner was the music video for the song Natural Born Killers. Dre didn't react much to the award, neither did the general public, since this victory doesn't even compare to that won by Bad Boy Records. Not even close. Gotta give a shout out to everybody at the Source Awards. Good looking out, peace. And after Dre's words, the Bad Boy Records performance commenced. Surrounded by criminals, heavy rollers, even the sights, the individuals, smoking, stunking, mad feelings. Then we have the Motion Picture Soundtrack of the Year Award nomination, which was won by Death Row Records. Suge Knight and Danny Boy came out on stage. The boss of Death Row sent his regards to Tupac, who was in prison at the time. I'd like to tell Tupac to keep his guards up and ride with him. And then he dissed Puff Daddy. Any artist out there want to be an artist and want to stay a star and don't want to, and want to have to worry about the executive producer trying to be all in the videos, all on the record, dancing, come to death row. And the whole crowd started booing and man, I thought to myself like, why would you do that? <laughs> we had no idea he was going to say it. We had no idea why he said it. Suge was angered by the fact that Puff tried to appear in all of his protege's projects. He wasn't letting the artist shine and was only thinking about himself. In short, Suge's opinion was that Bad Boy Records needed fame, not money. Love Puffy and Biggie. Yeah. So we was at we was like a, oh, fuck. And after that, the crowd was so riled up that the host had to calm everyone down. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> all right, anyway, listen. After such a fierce performance from Shook, Dre won the Producer of the Year award. Him and Snoop had quite the rough time. Dre was trying to be calm about things while Snoop couldn't withstand such a negative reaction. Dre had won the award and he was about to say something. I just took the mic and was like, fuck it. I need to say something. The East Coast don't love Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. The East Coast ain't got no love for Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg and Death Row. Y'all don't love us. Y'all don't love us. Well, let it be known then. We'll, we know y'all East Coast. We know we at East Coast. Of I mean, we could fast forward, but at that moment, did you feel like, man, that was a lot? Did you understand the size of it then? Nah. That was followed by a performance from the group Bone Thugs in Harmony. And as Crazy Bone claims, they had information that Suge offered his goons 10K to attack them. They told me that they, they was like, <laughs> they was, was going to pay somebody 10,000 to run up there with the, and, and, and sling on y'all with the cane, with a cane. He explained that Suge felt disrespected by the group's first of the month music video in which Several members wore beanies, a staple of Death Row's fashion at the time, that were on fire. After that came Pop, who decided not to say a word about Suge and his circle. I would like to say that I'm very proud of Dr. Dre, of Death Row, and Suge Knight for their accomplishments. You know what I'm saying? I'm a positive black man, and I make music to bring us together, not to separate us and all this East and West that need to stop. So give it up for everybody from the East and the West that won tonight. One love. And as Lil C says, Puffy told Biggie to stand down after Shook dissed him on stage. Puff being Puff, nah, we're not gonna go that route. We're mm -hmm. not gonna go that route, we're gonna let it be, but nah. And when Snoop won the Artist of the Year award, he reminded everyone where he came from. I wanna thank everybody out here for, um put me in a situation where I could win an award like this, being from Long Beach, California, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate the respect y'all give me 
and all my comrades in this music game, and we continue to keep G-Funk in y'all like we should do each and every mother of year. LBC. Later, the Wu-Tang Clan won the Group of the Year Award. They also wanted to calm the people down and wish peace upon everyone. On the count of three, we're going to say peace, all right? One, two, three, peace! All right, Wu-Tang forever, baby. Hold it up. Greg Mack then won the Single of the Year Award with his song, Flava in Ya Year. And there was one more award that was won by Bad Boy Records, and that's the Album of the Year Award, which was, of course, awarded to Biggie's album, Ready to Die. We did it, Brooklyn, we did it! All of We did it! But nothing! All of them! What love to all y'all mo- With tension in the air after Big Shook's comments, Puffy said he fell back on greenlighting the situation on death row, saying it was the scariest situation of his entire life, having the power to start something. However, before things concluded, Diddy said he confronted Mr. Knight immediately after the Source show at Chelsea's legendary nightclub, The Tunnel. I had that, I ran up and I asked him and he said, nah, I was talking about Jermaine Dupree. Mm, and I was oh, just like, wow. I, I really put to my, I put it in my head, it gave me a reason for my ego to walk away. As you already understood, Puffy didn't believe these words and he decided not to keep the conversation going. Because of that, communication between them stopped. That's when the papers began to fuel the beef between East and West. You're seeing certain things that somebody said highlighted in magazines about the West Coast and vice versa, and it just, it just boiled over from there. When I saw that fucking cover, I said, man, what the f is going on? After that night, and with every passing day, the relationship between the two coasts only worsened. And in the end, two legendary rappers were killed. It was after that, that the guys understood that it was time to put an end to it all. Man, all that East Coast, West Coast stuff is a bunch of media hype. It's been my dog from day one, you know what I'm saying? It's all good between me and him. That's my people. For real, that's what we came in for. We came in to light it up and ride it up. We made music for everybody. And Ice Cube talked about how the conflict just faded away. All the hip hop fans were so fed up with the East Coast, West Coast beef that they said, you know, we're just gonna pay attention to what the South is doing. You guys gotta heal your wounds and come back. The next video I recommend you watch is about the beef between Dr. Dre and Suge Knight. Subscribe to the channel and see you soon.